Okay, so moving on from the tools panel, so right now I just want you to kind of start getting used to those five tools we talked about. Um, we can start talking about color. And so in the previous video I showed you one way to select color, but there's actually lots of different ways to select color. Um, some easier than others, some better than others, and some that I just don't like myself, so I'll let you know when we get there. The three types of ways to select color are the color picker, and that's what I showed you in the previous video. There's also the color panel, that's the one that I really don't like and I would recommend not using. And then there's a swatches panel. In addition, there's something called, a, what do they call it now? Adobe Color Themes, um, which is another way to select color, but that's more for selecting and making sure colors work together as opposed to just picking like a purple color to use. And so I would say that the order that you're going to learn them or feel most comfortable learning them is the color picker, then I'll talk about the color panel, and ultimately then we're going to get in the swatches panel. But once you know the swatches panel, that's the one that you should be using. And so anytime you see this icon right here that shows the fill color on the left and the stroke color on the right, if you double click that you can launch the color picker, and then the color picker will help you pick colors. And you know, it's fun. You can kind of slide the color back and forth, up and down. You can enter colors if you know that you want to have more cyan. You can kind of manually change the adjustment on that if you want to. The color panel is a little bit more difficult because it's like the color picker in the sense that you're going to hover over a little dropper over the colored area at the bottom of your color panel. But you're going to like click, 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 click through it and it's really small and you can't really grab the exact color that you want most times. And so that's why I don't really use the color panel too much. The swatches panel is a way to save your color, and so you could use the color picker to select your color, and then let's say that you pick this really nice grassy green color and you want to use that over and over again. Um, you don't want to have to go back to the color picker and try to grab the right color, or even like write down what the cyan, magenta, yellow, black code values would be for that or percentage values would be, and enter that in manually. If you use a swatches panel, you can save those colors, and then you just have to click on them to use them over and over again. The swatches panel has some default colors that will just be available anytime you open a new document. And uh, from black and above, and so if we start at the top, none, registration, paper, and black, you can't get rid of those, they're always there. Um, but from the cyan swatch down, so cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue, you could delete those if you don't want to use them, or you could just use them as part of your product until you get better at selecting your color. If we jump back to InDesign, um, I have some other shapes on my workspace here. Let's get rid of these red ones. If I wanted to change the color of this circle, I could select it with my black mouse, my selection tool. Um, you can click and drag, and anything inside that, anything that touches that selection marquee will become active, or you can just kind of hover over the outside. If you double click on the fill, you can figure out what color you want to use. Maybe it's this nice purple color. You could double click on the stroke, which is the border, the outside color, and maybe you want that to be kind of an ugly, uh, it's not actually ugly, like a goldenrod yellow. And now you have a purple circle with a yellow border on it. Let's say that I wanted this star to be the same exact shade of purple with the same exact shade of yellow border. I could go back to my color picker, and you can do that anywhere you see this icon, right? So I see it down here, I could use it. It's also, when I select my star with the black mouse, the selection tool, it's also on your control bar up here. And so you can double click on the little box up there. It opens the same exact color picker. You can come through here and you could try to pick the same purple. Uh, that one's a little too pink. Maybe it's there. And then you can do the same thing. You can double click the stroke. It opens up the color picker and you can try to find the same goldenrod color but they're never going to be exact. If I overlap these two shapes right now, they are not the same color purple, and they're probably not the same color yellow, but that's harder to see. What you can do is instead of using the color picker to select the color every time, if you open the swatches panel, if you go to the window menu, color, and then swatches, or if you're using the typography workspace, the swatches panel should just be hanging out towards the top of your docked panels here. You can open the swatches panel. I'm going to undock. I'm going to grab the little tab, pull it out here, and just let it hang out over here. What you can do is you can select the color and then you can save it on this panel. And so there's a couple ways to do that. Let's say that, let's pick a new color. Let's grab our my rectangle I have up here. If I go back to the color picker, I'm just going to double click. And now I want it to be 
this color purple, which is a third color purple. If I select OK right now, it'll change the color of my box. But if you look closely, it will say add a CMYK swatch. And when I do that, oops, let's go over here a little bit. When I do that, it's going to add another color swatch or a saved color to my swatches panel automatically. And so now I've selected the color that I want for the purple box. And now I'm going to do the same thing. So we'll double click the stroke. And maybe I want to have a really obnoxiously bright green color as my stroke. And whoops, went too fast. And inside the dialog box, before I hit OK, I'm going to select Add a Swatch. And now I have the correct purple color and the correct green color that are saved. And so now if I wanted anything else in my document to be those same colors, like the star, I could select the star. And then instead of using the color picker, if we use a swatches panel to select color, all you have to do is click the color. And so right now I have my star selected. If we look at the stroke and the fill color at the top of the swatches panel, you can see that the yellow stroke is sitting in front of the purple fill. But if you click on the purple, it'll come to the foreground. And so this just tells you which color you're modifying. And so if I wanted to put a green border on the outside, I would have the stroke color up, select the green color that I saved, and now my stroke is green. And if you switch to the purple fill color, now if I change the fill color, let's say to cyan, it changes the fill color to whatever color that I click on on the swatches panel, and I could click on the color I want it to be. So I want them to both be the same colors. So now they're both the same color purple, and they have the same green outline. And we can do that one more time. So I can grab this circle here, and I could change the fill color because that's the color that's in the foreground right now. And I could change that to be the right purple. And then I can switch. I don't want to switch it. Don't hit the little triangle because that actually just flips the colors. I can switch to be controlling the stroke by selecting the stroke. And then now I can select the correct green color for the outline. The last panel, the one that I don't like to show, but I will show because it exists. If you go to the window menu and select color, you can open the color panel. This is the panel that I don't really like because it's kind of hard to to see the colors that you want and you have to change view mode so you can change it to CMYK out here. You can change it to lab color. You can do a bunch of different things. Um, but once you have your color selected, let's say that we have purple, if I wanted to change the fill color of this shape to pink, I would make sure the fill color is in the foreground, so the purple is in front of the green. And then you could slide your, your CMYK sliders until you get the right color. Or you can hover over, there's like a little eyedropper here, and you can kind of click around until you get the right color. But I find it really hard to use this panel, so I don't use it that much. Find the way that works for you for right now. Maybe you're required for the next project to change the fill and the stroke color of both your text and different shapes. And so you can use the color picker, the swatches panel, or you can even use a color panel if you want to.